All right, so you just picked yourself up a Super Nintendo or Super Famicom and a bunch of games. Now you want to be able to play on your HD TV. Unfortunately, the Super Famicom and Super Nintendo don't actually support HDMI, so you're normally just stuck with these cables. These composite cables work just fine, but the quality wasn't as good as the S-Video cable. Some third-party manufacturers would start making cables that included S-Video, and they'd offer noticeably better quality. I have another video on other Nintendo consoles with S-Video here, but for now we're just going to be focusing on a Super Nintendo. Alright, well we got a lot of stuff to cover today, so for those who aren't as interested in the technical side, I'll have some timestamps in the description so you can skip around to whatever you're interested in, but anyone who's looking at buying any of this stuff, I highly suggest at least watching the buyer's guide. Alright, today we're going to be mainly focusing on S-Video versus RGB and using them on a budget. Alright, let's talk S-Video first. It's certainly the cheapest way to go. You can get a pretty good cable for about $10, and even if it just has a Nintendo connection, it will work just fine on your Super Nintendo, your N64, and your GameCube, allowing you to have S-Video output on all of them. You can check the side and back of your TV to see if you have an S-Video port built in. If you do, that means you can enjoy the sharper picture quality right out of the box and you only spent $10. Unfortunately, some newer ones don't support S-Video, so what you can do is actually buy an HD upscaler box with an upscaler box, not only will we get the sharper picture quality with S-Video, it will also upscale it so it looks better on your TV. This box can upscale S-Video or even composite, so PS2, PS1, Xbox, Wii, any other system will upscale just fine on this box. Now RGB, on the other hand, it's a little bit more tricky. Nintendo never made an official cable that supported RGB, and most third-party cable makers don't even make RGB cables either. And on top of that, the N64 doesn't even support RGB without a mod, and neither does the GameCube. The cables are also more expensive, starting at around $20, and they're also region specific and console specific. And on top of that, the common connection type is SCART, a connection type that was never actually used in the USA. So don't expect to be able to just plug it into the back of your TV. Luckily, you can get the same type of upscaler box for SCART connections. But unfortunately, these boxes are made exclusively for SCART. So if you're looking to be able to also use it to upscale your Wii or any other device that does not use SCART, you'd be out of luck. This box would be pretty much exclusively for your Super Nintendo or anything else that's RGB modded. So it would seem that S-Video is not only cheaper, but the easier way to go. And yeah, that's true. It's a lot easier to set up, a lot less things needed, and upscale it still looks really, really nice. But RGB does have some advantages over it. Let's take a look at both side by side, and keep in mind that I use the exact same recording settings and brightness and contrast settings for both. My Super Nintendo is normally a little bit dark, so I boosted the brightness, but the exact same settings were used for both consoles. So this is what S-Video looks like, and now let's bring up the split screen and show RGB. At first look, it may just look like RGB is just simply a brighter picture, maybe even a little washed out, but that's not actually the case. I had to tweak my settings on my capture software and my TV quite a bit just for my Super Nintendo to show up properly since it, the picture was just really dark. So with this, it just shows just how much brighter RGB is. But you can also see the colors are actually a bit more vibrant. Next I will tweak the settings on both S-Video and RGB the exact same amount to try to bring S-Video back down to where it was originally. And as you can see, even though S-Video still looks pretty good, RGB is just way more vibrant. The colors just pop, the blacks are really nice and rich. It's just significantly better. It's even more noticeable in other games. Just take a look at Yoshi's Island. This is a very colorful game and RGB just brings every single color out and you just get to see it in a way you never would see it normally. And for dark colors, there's no better example than Super Metroid. This game's all about atmosphere and the RGB just really brings it out. On this video, since the contrast is not as good, everything just simply looks dark. While on RGB, with the rich blacks and the brighter colors, illuminated items kind of have a haunting glow to them. Now, if that's still too bright for you, most TVs have built-in contrast and brightness settings, so you can turn it down even more. One other odd thing about RGB is the Super Nintendo seems to process a picture a little bit differently, too. My Super Nintendo had this weird issue where any static elements on screen like HP bars and also menus would just have this weird streaking issue on them. This issue would show up on S-Video and Composite whether I was using an upscaling box or not. It was really weird, but as soon as I boot up the game with RGB, that issue was completely gone. Alright, now time for the buying guide. This can be a little bit tricky. Unfortunately, there aren't a huge amount of variety in upscalers. You got the lower end ones in the $20 to $40 range, and then you got the higher end ones at well over $300. Ideally, if you had the money, you'd go with something like the Framemeister, 
from what I've seen and heard, that's a really nice option. It has all the features you possibly want. It doesn't need an adapter for SCART cable, but it's a really nice option. For us people who are looking for a budget option, if you go online and search, you'll find quite a few options for either one. The main rule of thumb I have is always looking for something that lists itself as a brand name and probably the best thing to do is you be go with one that's around a $40 mark. The generic ones or the $20 ones usually have a much higher failure rate. Honestly, I'd say avoid eBay altogether. Most of the products are generic, they're sold by companies that sell literally everything and also they usually make you pay return shipping even on DOA items. But even when shopping on places like Amazon, you start to notice that some of these products look a little bit similar. Yeah, some of them use the exact same design, exact same hardware and everything. But the difference between the cheaper like $15 or $20 ones and the $40 ones is the actual quality control. What you're paying for is the extra ones they have to throw out because they're not working. So for example, here are two upscalers that I have. One is from Amazon, one is from eBay. Can you tell the difference? I can't, but one of these was $28 and the other one was $40. The difference is the $28 one had major problems right out of the box. I plugged it in, hooked up my Super Nintendo, and I had no picture whatsoever. So I turned everything off, unplugged everything, plugged it back in, and eventually I was finally able to get a picture, and then after about 10 minutes of playing, it just shut off. Completely. Eventually it turned itself back on, and there was no picture. So, the music was still working. Oh wait, here comes the picture, it's back! And we got some green flashing on the screen, that's never a good sign. And it's gone again. Sure, it is possible for any of these upscales to fail out of the box, but you will notice a pretty big difference in positive reviews between the cheaper ones and the slightly more expensive over $40 ones. Even though they may both have the same score of like 4 out of 5, uh, you have to look at the actual breakdown in order to see which one has more positive reviews. Alright, the next thing we need to talk about is input lag. Pretty much any HD device hooked up to your HD TV is going to have a little bit of input lag. Using this S-Video upscaler, I didn't notice much more input lag than any of my other HD devices. But I did notice that with the SCART upscaler, I got a little bit more input lag than normal. It wasn't a huge amount and it's hardly noticeable, but it is there. Another weird issue I had was with full screen scrolling, I had this weird kind of ghosting or stuttering or something, I don't know. It didn't show up very well in the recording so I had to really slow it down. It only seems to happen when the entire screen is scrolling really fast. Even in platformers like Donkey Kong Country it wasn't even that noticeable, but it's pretty noticeable here. Turning the output resolution down to 720p really helped, but it still looks a little bit off. Even on full 1080p displays, having it run at 720p still looks really nice. And it seems to only be really noticeable in one game as far as I can tell so far. Alright guys, well that's all I got for today. So, uh, summary. S-Video is definitely the more simple route. There's a lot more cables out there and a lot wider variety of boxes, like good ones. Uh, unfortunately, RGB, since it uses SCART, is a whole lot less options. It's mainly only like a few designs and then you just get a few different people, you get a bunch of people selling those few designs. Uh, if there were a better SCART option, I'd definitely recommend it way higher. I mean, short as a frame ISO, that's way more expensive. Um, it, it's really nice. I really like it. I mean, sure, it does have problems with the motion blur thing, but you, it's, e it's pretty easy to fix. And Zelda is the only game I had a problem with. I was playing F0, it was just fine. So it does have some issues, but I think it does actually offer better quality. But for some people, the colors don't really matter and for those people if you just want to play on your TV and you just want to have fun then sure just grab an S video cable grab one of those cheap upscalers the $40 ones and you'll you'll enjoy yourself but for people who want to get just like the perfect quality you really I, I don't even know if I want to say this I, I think it's still a pretty good buy to get the $40 uh, SCART box even it gives you a taste of what you could actually get if you eventually get a frame meister because for instance right now if i never tried this box i probably would never even got a frame meister i would have been like 300 dollars for an upscaler what but by being able to use this it actually makes me want to save up for a frame meister so i think this does actually have a place if you want to get the better colors and maybe not have everything perfect it's still a pretty cool option but overall i don't think this will be a permanent solution for anyone no one's going to want to use this box for like 20 years i don't even know if it will last like 15 or 20 years so it's definitely something that's interesting, it's definitely something cool to try, um, but for most people I'd probably say just stick with S-Video. 
and save up for frame meister but if you just want or if you want rgb now this is a way to do it and it does work fairly well yes it has extra um input lag yes it does have a little bit of a ghosting issue and yes it's a mixed bag right now since there's even less options than s video boxes but it is still a pretty cool option and it does look really nice so uh i say if you have the money just go ahead and give it a try but again from lots of people s video will be more than enough so all right that's all i got for today so i guess i'll see you in the next video bye